1961, Lorenz was working with a set of equations that represented a simplified version of the atmosphere with 12 variables that changed over time. The computer calculated the values for each moment in time by applying the equations to the values from the previous moment. And Lorenz watched how they progressed. He needed to be sure that like real weather, they did not follow a repeating pattern. In some cases, Lorenz's team needed to reprint part of the simulation, so they would restart it from an earlier point by entering the numbers from an earlier printout. Since they used the same numbers and equations, they expected to see the same results, but sometimes they didn't. In some cases, the second run would look very different from the first as it progressed. At first, Lorenz thought the computer was malfunctioning, but he eventually found the source of the error. While the computer's memory stored numbers with six decimal places, it printed them with only three decimal places, so the values he entered contained tiny errors. Lorenz was observing that in some systems, tiny changes in the present can lead to big changes in the future. Today, we can create models of the atmosphere that go far beyond Lorenz's columns of numbers. In this model from MIT, the white lines represent a bunch of balloons released from approximately the same point. Eventually, the balloons diverge along very different paths because of the small differences in their starting points. Change the initial condition ever so slightly, infinitesimally slightly. The two trajectories seem to go along with each other, and then they diverge, and they diverge exponentially fast. So that is chaos. It means that you have to know a system with infinite precision to be able to predict it infinitely in time. This is what scientists now call sensitive dependence on initial conditions, and it wasn't a completely new idea. As far back as 1903, the great French mathematician Henri Poincaré observed something similar while studying the problem of three objects in space, all affected by each other's gravity. When Lorenz presented this work at a conference in 1963, he ended his talk with an anecdote about a meteorologist who asked whether the flap of a seagull's wings could change the weather forever. In work published in 1969, Lorenz returned to the question of the seagull's wing by taking a closer look at how tiny motions in the air scale up over time to affect huge systems and how errors in small-scale measurements evolve into large-scale errors in prediction. He proposed a mathematical model of how this might work and found something surprising. The systems in his model could only be predicted up to a specific point in the future. Beyond that, reducing the initial error wouldn't increase the predictability. Lorenz didn't know for sure that the atmosphere behaves this way, and we still don't. But his model had major implications, because it showed a future determined by physical laws may be no different from one that is completely random in terms of our ability to predict it beyond a certain point. When Lorenz presented this work at a conference in 1972, the organizer didn't receive his talk title in time, so he suggested one. Does the flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas? So the butterfly, instead of the seagull, became the image most associated with his work. In 1987, a popular book by James Gleick introduced the world to the work of Lorenz and other chaos pioneers and the butterfly effect became part of popular culture. The butterfly effect is a theory according to which the smallest things, such as a butterfly flapping its wings can create a series of events leading to a catastrophe, such as a tornado. Hmm. 